I'm Mark Fritz, and with me today is Chris Lyons, who is representing the Microphone Industry Coalition. First off, Chris, there's a lot of, of jargon being thrown around out there with DTV and everything. What exactly is the white space issue that we're talking about? Well, it's confusing because there's a lot going on at the same time. Uh, white spaces are the unoccupied TV channels between the occupied TV channels. Yeah. In the transition to digital television, all of the TV stations are going to be packed into the spectrum below 698 megahertz beginning in February of 2009. And some of the remaining spectrum above that point is going to be blocked up and auctioned off by the FCC for other uses. But there's still going to be some gaps between television stations in any given city. And the FCC is looking for ways to make better use of those channels as well. What, uh, what type of technology are we talking about that that's going to come in? Um, well, PDAs or, or what? In, it's going to be a variety of things. In the auction sections, it could be things like uh, mobile television reception on your, on your cell phone or your PDA. Uh, it could be you know, stock quotes or internet access. In the white spaces, the FCC is specifically looking to provide wireless internet access both to home fixed devices and portable devices that you carry with you. Okay. Um, as an integrator, um, a company I work for is a, a large-scale integration firm. Uh, what is this going to have? What type of effect will this have on our clients? Well, it's not really clear yet. Things are still shaping up at the FCC, so we don't know exactly how this will pan out. Uh, but definitely on the auction side of things, in the higher frequency ranges, as those new services come online after 2009, there's the potential for some uh, interference to occur with wireless microphones that are operating on frequencies up in that range. Uh, and in the white spaces area down below, we're not clear yet on what those new devices are going to be as far as power levels go, transmission scheme, uh, or interference preve uh, prevention measures. So we're still waiting for the FCC to issue its final rulings on, on those details. Yeah. Back to the, the auction issue you just mentioned. Uh, will be be illegal for a, a wireless microphone user to operate in that band once this happens? That's It probably won't be illegal. The FCC hasn't made any statements that they would uh, force existing wireless microphone users to vacate that spectrum. It'll probably be more of a case of whether or not you want to doesn't matter. It just really isn't very effective because there's another high-powered user on that channel. For instance, TV channel 55 is already being used for a, a service called Media Flow that sends television to your mobile device. If you happen to be in one of the 40 cities where that uh, service is already up and running and your wireless mic is on channel 55, you might be exp experiencing some interference. You're probably going to want to move off of that channel you know, as quick as you can. Um, looking at, at the computer industry as an example, uh, do we see a case where maybe clients are going to think, great, uh, another system I've bought is now obsolete. Uh, and what can, as an integrator, what can we do to kind of hedge that? Well, that's a good question. The, the most important thing here is awareness of the situation in a, a particular locality. So any integrator that's got clients, say, around a particular city, first of all, should be uh, learning as much as they can about what are going to be the active TV channels after 2009 and what, if any, are the new auction services in the auction spectrum that are going to come online and start looking at the inventory of wireless microphones that their customers have and saying, are any of these frequencies in vulnerable sections? Do I need to think about retuning them, resetting them, even in some cases maybe replacing them? Okay. Um, back to with, with the white spaces issue, uh, it's my understanding that, that uh, Senator or Representative Hill from Illinois had sponsored a, a bill to basically asking the FCC to take a hard look at what this effect will be. Uh, last time I checked, this bill was still in committee. Has there been any development on the political side of this issue? There hasn't been a lot of movement in, in the uh, 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 political sector on this. There are a couple of different competing bills on either side of this issue. Um, but fortunately, what's happened is it's caused a lot of attention to be paid both in Congress and at the FCC with both senators and representatives supporting one side or the other telling the FCC, hey, you've got to pay attention to this. You need to really make sure that this is managed properly. And I think that really got the FCC to really take a very close, critical look at the technology and making sure that it's tested fully before anything is rolled out. 
Uh, anything other than the letter writing campaigns and things like that that we can get our clients involved with to spur this along? Well, it's always helpful when representatives hear from their local constituencies. So any integrator who does significant business that depends on wireless microphones should be writing a letter to their local representatives and senator and saying, hey, this is important to me, and if this service is disrupted, it, it affects my business and my bottom line. And they love, representatives love hearing from their local people about that. Okay. Well, thank you. We're going to take a short break right now. So you're watching Viewpoint. Um, I'm Mark Fritz, and with me is Chris Lyons. We'll be back right after this break. The Crestron MPS integrates five separate AV components into a single rack-mountable package. MPS brings a complete presentation control and signal routing solution to boardrooms, classrooms, and auditoriums. MPS works right out of the box and may be controlled directly from the front panel. MPS from Crestron.